This is the $100 uh, coin here? shop challenge. You're going uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> What you're looking at is the famous Picasso statue in downtown Chicago, and just south of that on Clark Street is an awesome coin shop. Hey, watch out for those traffic cops. I'm heading to Harlan J. Burr, a historic coin shop. T. Hello, silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver and numismatic education, acquisition, and entertainment. Hey, if you like coin shop videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to see my next one. All right, guys. Hey, back at Harlan J. Burke. Uh, hey, these are the partners in crime here. Uh, you guys know Russ. You've met Mike before. It's been a while, Mike. Uh, glad to talk to you again. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, hey, I've got something special for you. And Russ and I were hanging out at the coin club meeting last night. And uh, I ran it by him. But this is going to be the first that you're hearing of it. Uh, I'm a little scared. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so Russ might have a one up on you a, a little bit here, but maybe not because I know you have such an in-depth knowledge of every you know bit of. Oh, you've been reading the rock book. That's <laughs> <laughs> here it is uh, a first on YouTube. I've been watching silver stacking channels, coin collecting channels for a long time. I've never seen anything like this. This is the one hundred dollar coin shop challenge. Okay. And so here is the criteria. If you guys are up for the challenge and want to humor me here, always. Uh, <laughs> 100 bucks is what I've got to spend on a coin or coins today. Okay. okay. And your challenge, each of you, should you choose to accept it, is to uh, each come up with two or three ideas and bring them to me. And then once I take a look, I will make the decision as to what I want to purchase. You're going uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I'm thinking is this, as I've kind of dreamed this up, what I'm looking for as I'm considering a purchase is cool factor. I don't usually buy like just buffaloes or generic stuff. Uh, it could be, you know, I'm a silver stacker, so it could be bullion or uh, semi-numismatic or whatever. Or it could be a numismatic coin out of left field. Uh, that is something for a hundred bucks that, you know, I was telling Russ last night, maybe it's like a diamond in the rough. Maybe it's uh, a damaged coin, cold coin, something super cool, but it just happens to be at that level because of, uh, you know, those circumstances. So any questions before I let you guys run around, look through the cases? No, you're going down. I'm going down. <laughs> you're going down. Right, we'll see what happens. This is what I was hoping for. All right, guys. Three, two, one, go. Who wants to go first, guys? Uh, I'll go. Okay. Russ? All right. First option. So I have put together a lot of oddities. Ah. Um, so basically what I've done is um, I've put together, you could easily buy this exact lot for probably even a little under $100, especially like here in my shop. Um, so what I have is I really like odd stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so what I have for the first few coins are odd denominations. Okay. So you have a US half cent, you have a US two cent piece, a US three cent silver piece, Huh. A three cent nickel piece and a half dime. And uh, what's up with that penny there? Yeah, and so and is then, it on the L tracks or what? <laughs> <laughs> and then so this is an off center Lincoln cent. Okay. Um, it's from um, 1982 and you know to present. It's made out of zinc. Um, they're very dramatic, but they're not very expensive. I sell them for anywhere from 10 to 12 bucks, depending. Okay. Um, but they're super dramatic. People love them because it's such a crazy oddity. 
But um, what I like about this lot is it's stuff that the vast majority of people, the general public, has never seen or have even thought of mm -hmm. in their life. Um, you know, you tell people that you know the U.S. made a, a three cent piece, not only a three cent piece, but two different three cent pieces. Hmm. Or, um, you know, people are so used to the nickel as the five cent piece, mm -hmm. but, you know, the nickel is relatively new. It only came out in 1866. Before that, it was the half dime, which was literally the size of half of a dime, and it was made out of silver. Um, so I really like this kind of stuff because it's, it's odd, and it's a really good conversation starter, especially for people that are brand new to the hobby and, you know, maybe have $100 to spend mm -hmm. or, you know... Um, the general public that have never seen something like that. Oh, that was my, one part of my idea. You know, hundred bucks, something that you know everybody's got a hundred bucks. It's, it's not the five hundred dollar. It's mm -hmm. not the thousand dollar coin shop challenge. So, hundred bucks, somebody could get started uh, with a pretty darn neat set like that. Man, that's a in, in my book, that's a strong contender. Now, it's a hundred dollars for all those coins. Yeah, I mean they're really not terribly expensive. Okay. Some of you know, so it's the, the whole shebang. Yeah, in that box. Hundred dollars, and so boy. All right, well, this is on the line right here, <laughs> <laughs> Mike. What do you, now? Is all that? Are these different options here, Mike? These are different options. Okay. So I again, I'm like Russ. I like odd, no wonder. I like odd stuff. Uh -huh. So I have a couple of half cents here. Okay. This one is a draped bust half cent, and it's it's in VF, kind of a little bit damaged condition, but mm -hmm. it's you know about a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Um and these are both in really decent condition. Uh -huh. They come from a time when you know we could make a half cent, mm -hmm. and we needed to make a half cent. Uh, a couple of different types from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Either one of them are a really good place to start a collection. Okay, and and this one right here. Okay. That's the next, which is the classic head. Okay, and so uh -huh. that one was from That's 1825. Mm -hmm. These are a couple of designs that people maybe never seen mm -hmm. on large copper. Mm -hmm. Then if you want something completely different, and this is the one that I thought Russ was going to go for, and he uh -huh. didn't. This is an 1883 Hawaii 25 cents. Hawaii. This is from the kingdom of Hawaii. This is King Kamehameha. Okay. Wow. What's the reverse look like? I'd like to see that. Is it a quarter hapa? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was from the Kingdom of White. But now for something completely different. Uh, uh -oh. This is something that we took in. <laughs> a little sleight of that hand. That is just way too cool. <laughs> this is an is a so-called dollar from the 1939 World's Fair. Oh. It's 90% silver, and it weighs in between a half dollar and a dollar. Where was it held that year? Uh, it was in New York. Okay. And so the Art Deco design on it is just absolutely beautiful. It's got a reeded edge. It's just really neat. It's yeah. an oval coin with a reeded edge and a really cool design. You can't say that I've ever seen an oval coin before. Yeah. Huh. That's pretty good. Man, oh man. So I think Mike is kind of missing a little bit of the real cool factor with the Hawaii quarter, and I'm going to help his case a little bit, unfortunately. Please, help me. Because it's just a friendly competition, guys. I, I love Hawaii stuff because what's really cool is it's it's a pseudo-U.S. coin. So this is the kingdom of Hawaii. This is 1883. It's still an independent kingdom, mm -hmm. but um, they're looking to be a, a bigger power on the world stage. They're looking to compete and not be seen as a native backwater. They don't want to get colonized. So they're trying to figure out what they can do. And one of those things is, okay, well, if we strike coins in the European style or the American style, that gives us some credit. Mm -hmm. So this design was actually struck in San Francisco. We yeah. struck this for them. We okay. struck about 500000 for them. Um, and Charles Barber, who was the mint director at the time, actually executed these designs and these dies. These barber, are, yeah. of the Barber Dime. Of the Barber Dime, Barber, barber Quarter. Barber, yeah. Yeah. The Barber fame. Um, but what's cool is this is struck on a standard U.S. quarter planchet. So it's it's sort of a U.S. coin, but it's sort, sort of, of not. not. And, you know, Hawaii becomes, you know, we there was some things that happened, and one thing led to another, and we planted a flag, and we ended up with Hawaii. So it's it's very neat because it's it's U.S. but it's world but it's neither. Mm -hmm. um, it's uniquely American and yet not. Not exactly. Mm. Boy, 
uh, this is a tough case you're making for the Hawaii. <laughs> he sold my. I know, I know, I couldn't help it. And uh, here's the deciding factor. Uh, Mrs. T is here to my right. I've dragged her up to cold, windy Chicago today with me. Mrs. T, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. T and I have very fond memories of Hawaii. We got lucky and uh, had a chance to go there on our 25th wedding anniversary. So I'll tell you what, guys, uh, this is going for the Hawaii mm -hmm. coin. The first ever $100 Coin Shop Challenge goes to Mike. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mike of the Coin and Rocks. Now, I feel like I should get a little bit of credit. You, right, right. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Good point, guys. I think this <laughs> That's is... That's a team victory. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is Mike, uh, i tell you what. You're representing the Coin Show Podcast. I am. And, uh, you know, score one for Matt Dinger, your buddy, as well. That's true. Uh, and uh, how about a quick mention of the Coin Show Podcast? A little... What, what should people expect? If they go find you, we do educational segments. We do the news in coins. We most recently interviewed the U.S. Mint director. Um, it's a lot of fun and, and goof it off. We publish a show about every two weeks, and you can find it if you look on YouTube. You can search the Coin Show. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also just search Google for the Coin Show podcast, and yeah. we'll come up at Coin Show Radio. Or you could just look in my uh, video description because I'll have links down there. And I'll tell you what, when you guys interviewed the Mint director, you didn't mess around. You asked some tough questions. And uh, so uh, I'll tell you what, that's a little teaser for my viewers uh, to go check out uh, that uh, podcast. So, fellas, thank you so much for indulging me, and I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Hey, Russ and Mike were great sports, and so are these channel members who support my efforts to bring you videos just like this one.